How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're gonna take a look at some practice problems for 19.7 free energy and the equilibrium constant. So our objectives will be to calculate the change in free energy at non-standard conditions, as well as relate KQ to standard free energy. So this is the equation we're gonna be using where the change in standard uh, free energy is equal to the change in the standard How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're gonna take a look at some practice problems for 19.7, free energy and the equilibrium constant. So our objectives will be to calculate the change in free energy at non-standard conditions, as well as relate KEQ to standard free energy. So we have the change in free energy is gonna be equal to the change in free energy under standard conditions, delta G naught, plus RT times the natural log of Q. So let's get into it, number one. If the delta G naught for a reaction is positive, then K is, is it greater than, less than, or equal to one? Circle correct option. So we start with the whole, the delta G equals the delta G naught plus RT natural log of Q. So if we're at equilibrium, my delta G is gonna be zero and my Q is gonna be KEQ. So now our equation becomes zero equals my delta G naught plus RT natural log of KEQ. So if we're trying to figure out what's going on with KEQ, uh, let's rearrange it. So I'm gonna to have to subtract delta G naught to both sides, and then I have to divide by RT, and then I have natural log of KEQ, and then if I wanna get rid of the natural log, I gotta put the whole other side to base E, that Euler's number. So I end up with E to the negative delta G over RT equals KEQ. So it's saying if the delta G naught for reaction is positive, then the KEQ must be, well, let's see. Uh, R and T are gonna be numbers. If this is a positive number, that means this whole exponent is gonna end up being a negative number, which means my KEQ is going to be less than one. It's gonna be a number to a negative power. This is gonna give you a less than one value. All right, if the delta G naught of a reaction at 25 C is determined to be positive 305 kilojoules per mole, what is the equilibrium constant for this reaction at this temperature? So again, we end up with the delta G naught equals negative RT natural log of KEQ, All right? So it says, we, we're given this, uh, we know the, the temperature, R is a constant, so we're trying to solve for KEQ. So what I generally do is try to move everything to the other side first. So I get delta G divided by negative RT, that gets rid of this, and then how do I get rid of the natural log? I put the other side to the base E. So I end up with KEQ equals E to the delta G naught divided by RT but it's a negative. So let me plug and chug. I get E to the, my delta G naught is that positive 303.05 kilojoules per mole. Now my gas constant, I wanna use it in kilojoules. You might be familiar with the 8.314 and that's uh, joules per mole Kelvin. We have to divide that by a thousand to get kilojoules so that we agree with this unit right here. So I end up with 0 0.008314 kilojoules per mole Kelvin times by the temperature, which has got to be converted to Kelvin, so 25 Celsius is 298 Kelvin. And when I plug and chug, and hopefully I do that correctly in my calculator, I end up with 0.292 as my final answer. Oh, I forgot to write the negative sign here. So yeah, well, there you go. That's the answer for number two. All right, number three, for the following reaction, given the thermodynamic data, calculate the equilibrium constant for this reaction. All right, so let's work backwards a little bit. I know the equilibrium constant is gonna be equal to, well, it's gonna be found in this equation, right? Delta G naught equals negative RT ln of KEQ. And then they didn't give us the delta G naught, so we're gonna have to figure out the delta G. They gave us the delta H and the, the S's for those, so we can figure out 
those, oh, and then wait a minute, I know that delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So that's relating my entropy and my enthalpy to my delta G. Um, so wait, they didn't give me my delta H, so I'm gonna have to figure that out, right? So this is gonna be uh, like a three-step problem. One, I gotta figure out delta H and delta S. Two, I gotta use that to find my delta G. And then three, I gotta use that to find my KEQ. So let's start with my change in enthalpy. I got two SO2 gases, so I look at my delta H's. That's gonna be two times that negative 297 kilojoules per mole plus O2's delta HF is zero, plus zero, then goes to two SO3's. And if I look at SO3, it's gonna be two times negative 395. So when I do the math, I gotta do my final minus my initial values. And when I get the delta H, hey, what was that? Let's see if I can find my work. I end up with negative 196 kilojoules per mole. Now I gotta watch. The delta H's are usually given in kilojoules and my uh, entropy values are usually given in joules. So I gotta make them agree, right? I gotta either convert the kilojoules to joules or joules to kilojoules. So let me figure out my delta S. Same process, I have two SO2s, which are at 249 each, plus an O2, which is 205. And then that goes to two SO3s. So two times the value of SO3, which is 256 and if I get now the difference between my products from my reactants how much did that change I end up with a negative 191 but this is in joules per mole Kelvin so now I'm going to convert that to kilojoules because I'd prefer to do that you could do kilojoules to joules I like doing the joules to kilojoules so I end up with a negative 0.191 kilojoules per mole Kelvin so now I gotta go to my second step. My second step is my delta G equals my delta H minus T delta S. So now I use those values that I just saw for. My delta H is a negative 196 kilojoules per mole minus the temperature at 298 Kelvin. So it's 298 Kelvin times my delta S, which I found to be negative 0.191 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. And when I pick up the calculator and I plug and chug, I end up with a negative 139 kilojoules per mole. All right, so now I gotta go back to my step three. I'm gonna erase this so I get some room. So now I got my delta G, I can use it to find my KEQ. So if I rearrange and just do some algebra, I get KEQ equals E to the uh, delta G naught divided by negative RT. So now I can plug and chug. My delta G is that negative 139 kilojoules per mole divided by a negative, can't forget this negative sign, RT. So 0 0.008314 kilojoules per mole Kelvin times the temperature. Oops. Sorry about that, times by 298 Kelvin. And when I do that, I end up with, I'm gonna to have to write it up here, 2.398 times 10 to the 24th. So that is my final answer. So this question, really obnoxious because it's like almost like a four step problem you got to find delta h you got to find delta s you got to use that to find delta g and then you got to use that to find keq all right number four ammonia is synthesized from nitrogen and hydrogen in the haber process according to the following balanced chemical equation and there it is delta g naught at 298 for this reaction is negative 33.3 kilojoules per mole what is the delta g at 298 for a reaction to make sure that consists initially of this many atmospheres, that many atmospheres, and that many atmospheres of each thing. So I'm gonna have to go to, hey, my delta G equals my delta G naught under standard conditions plus RT ln of Q. So now I just kinda plug and chug. Remember my Q is my reaction quotient 
uh, it, it's the same thing as a KQ, but with the values plugged in. So it'll be my products, which will be NH3 to the second power because of the two in the equation divided by my reactants. I got N2 times H2, which is gonna get cubed because again of the three coefficient there. And I can use the pressures for that. So it's just gonna be Delta G naught, which is negative 33.3 kilojoules per mole, plus my R of 0 0.008314 kilojoules per mole Kelvin, times the temperature in Kelvin, which they said is 298, times by the LN of Q. So the pressure I'm gonna have to write a little bit on a slant of NH3. They said is 0.65, so it'll be 0.65 squared over the pressure of N2, which is 1.9, times the pressure of H2, which is 1.6, but that 1.6 is gonna get cubed. So when I pick up my calculator and I plug and chug, and I combine all those terms, I end up with a negative 40.2 five kilojoules per mole all right so careful how you punch in numbers in the calculator make sure that you put parentheses around what you need to otherwise you're going to get the wrong answer all right number five last one in the section phosphorus trichloride is produced by reacting phosphorus and chlorine gases together according to the balanced chemical equation below the delta g naught at 298 for this reaction is 642.9 kilojoules per mole negative what is the value of delta G at 298 for a reaction mixture that consists of this? So same equation as the last one. Delta G equals delta G naught plus RT ln of Q. So let's figure out what my Q expression is going to be. Products PCL3 going to get squared because of the two in front of it here divided by the reactants. So I got P2 times Cl2, which is going to get cubed again because of this. So pretty similar to the last problem. So my delta G naught, negative 642.9 kilojoules per mole, plus R, 0.008314 kilojoules per mole Kelvin, times the Kelvin, which they gave me as 298, times the natural log of Q. So the value of PCL3, they said is 0.65, so 0.65 gets squared, divided by the pressure of P2, which they said is 1.5, times the pressure of Cl2, 1.6, but that 1.6 is getting cubed. So when I plug and chug, pick up my calculator, beep bop, beep bop, boop, round it to two sig figs, because of all those pressures, I get 600, and 50 kilojoules per mole, and it's negative. So negative 650 kilojoules per mole. That's my final answer. I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.